perspective, um, or what we often would call a hard system, it it's obviously falls short in in reconciling across different systems. The second B here is referred to a, um, an expert system um, where you have hard boundaries circumscri circumscribing certain elements within the system. So you use a defining unit like a sea or a watershed to focus on that. And the third C is, is um, more like the system I was introducing in, in terms of the Red River Delta, um, where you have different stakeholders, what I call stateholders, trying to maintain their particular state uh, to benef benefit from that, from their particular interest. Um, at this stage, I'm not going to um, talk about D, but we may come back to, to, to that in the um, workshop. So I've talked about interests, but I think we maybe should e to also talk about positions that these different stakeholders have a different positioning within a system. And what I mean by positioning is that they have different degrees of agency in bringing about transformation. And this uh, exercise that I often take people through uh, quite, is quite useful to actually scrutinize the transformation that you're looking at or your change project, the change that you are introducing into the system. Um, looking at for, looking at it from the perspective of the interests and looking at at a perspective of the positions, those that have more or less agency in the system. And we use an idiom called um, robbing Peter to pay Paul here. Um, and this idiom is probably familiar to you and for those that it isn't, um, it dates back to the dilemma the Catholic Church, Church faced in the beginning of the 16th century. Um, the Church of St. Paul. And as the Church of St. Peter became stronger in England, many of the taxpayers who were paying tax to the Catholic Church, St. Paul, um, converted to um, the Church of England and started paying taxes to the Church of England, um, in this case, the Church of St. Peter. So hence his notion of robbing Peter to pay Paul. This is something we might want to test when we're, we're critiquing your, your, your change projects at the workshop. So finally, um, in terms of the exercise that we'll be running, and I understand your 10 groups, and there are two of you that have a change project together. So we will be breaking up into groups and trying to, um, in a more systematic way, unpack um, what I would call the soft system in terms of your change project. And to do that, we're going to use um, what we call a soft system mnemonic called two, two cages. And it might be valuable for you to start thinking about these categories so you're familiar with them when we run the exercise at the workshop in February. Um, the soft system mnemonic has these different categories, T meaning transformation, in this case, the change in your change project um, or desired future state of a particular situation or particular system. So you need to pin that down. Um, it would be useful for you to think about W here, which is the worldview, um, and think about the different values and justifications under, underpinning the proposed change. Remembering that that particular system that you're working with is occupied with, with stakeholders that have different interests, but also um, 
position holders, those that have more or less agency that can actually um, deploy their agency to distort or enhance or enable a particular transformation. You have the owner in a system and an owner is defined as those who can who control the change and at any moment can actually start it or stop it. Who are they? You need to think about them. You need to think about the clients in a, in a sense and the clients are those who are the, you know, who may benefit from the change, who are beneficiaries or might be victims of the change. So give that some thought. Think about the actors, those who are actually going to carry out the activities uh, or those who are actually going to be directly implementing um, the different actions and measures that are required to achieve the change in your change project. Is there a guardian in, in your system of interest? And though uh, the guardian, guardian is those who actually monitor and inform the unintended outcomes of the change. And think about the environment. And those are, um, are influences that are outside the control of the owners that may help or hinder the change. And the environment can be both the sort of social environment, the culture and the traditions that are that are nested within um, the context where your change is happening, or it could be biophysical factors that we really can't control um, that will need to be considered when you're going to bring about the change. And finally, think about the system system being all those activities that must be initiated and coordinated to actually achieve the change. So that's all I'm going to say for the moment, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon at the, um, um, at the workshop in February. Thank you.